Jesus told the, 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 the Pharisees one time, because they heard him talking about the blind leading the blind and they're going to the ditch and so on. He, he said, for judgment, Jesus said, I'm coming to this world that they which are blind might see and they which see uh, would be blind. He was talking this when a young man who was born blind had received his sight and was being ridiculed by the church folks because his miracle had occurred in a day they didn't think it should have happened. And, and they were saying to him that the man who you're claiming, open your eyes, he's a sinner. And the, the fellow was bold. He said, where is the sinner? I know not. One thing I know, I was blind, now I see. And since the days of any one of y'all, he's telling them, have a heard of anybody born blind getting their sight restored? And I know the man began to preach that God don't hear sinners. And if this man could open my eyes, I say that he's a prophet. And so they threw him out of the church. But Jesus found him and asked him, do you believe in the son of God? He said, Lord, who is he that I might believe? He said, I, the one who'm talking to you, I am he. And he said, Lord, I believe. And then Jesus said, for this reason, the son of man has come to give sight to those who are blind. And those who claim to see, they will be blind. And so the Pharisees, they heard him. And they said, so what are you saying? Are we blind? Are you saying we are blind? Now these are rulers. And Jesus said to them, as long as y'all keep saying you see, you see, that is why your sin remains. Because you're claiming that you know. You see, to him who knows to do good and do it, it's not a sin. That's all. So since you're claiming that you could see and you claim that you know, that's why you will have to give account for what you're doing because you say you know. All right? But I, I see God today sovereignly setting again our focus and our gaze upon him and not on our circumstances. Our circumstances are very temporal when we walk with God. When we walk with God, God puts in our mouth his word. His word becomes like a sword spiritually. And it is used to navigate our path. So, when things are going good in your marriage, or things are going good in your life, or in your home, or in whatever concerns you, your work, your place of work, your business, use your mouth as a godly sword. And declare, according to God's word, what it should be. I will have peace. There will be joy in this house. There will be unity. Instead of complaining or murmuring or just saying what you're seeing with these eyes. All right? Your mouth was not given to you to say what you're seeing with the natural eyes. Jesus has come into the world so that those of us who were spiritually blind might see. And I pray today that there would be a new awareness, a new opening of our eyes. As we used to sing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Father, we thank you for your presence with us. And we thank you for breaking yokes today. We thank you for lifting burdens. We thank you for removing anxiety and fear. And we thank you that you've given us victory over the enemy. In all of his plots and schemes, we have the victory in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you and give you praise. Amen. In this world, people do have trouble. In this world, many terrible things happen. Jesus said, perilous times shall come. But I want you to hear me today. God has never lost the battle. And that God is on your side. You're thinking like, oh, oh me? Same me who does make the Same you. God is on your side. And this God is fighting for you. And this God will bring you victory in the area of your struggles. In the area you need, this God, who's never lost a battle, will stand up for you. And I urge you today, I urge you to please, please hear me. Don't look on things that are happening and all the sayings and the going on. And let your heart be troubled. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus said. God got you. 
Sometimes things at home and working too right. I want you to, again, I was about to say, invoke the God factor in your house. Declare as you go into this house, this is God's space. This is God's house. And only godliness will happen. I want you to take back your space that God had given to you. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's. He had given to the children of men this planet. So let's take our place. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you again for freedom. We thank you for deliverance. And we thank you for healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to go with me in your Bibles. I want to talk to us about this wonderful God. And learning his ways. So I want to talk to us this morning about understanding the ways of God. You know, the Bible says that the children of Israel, they only saw the acts of God. They saw when he parted the Red Sea. They saw when he brought manna from heaven. They saw the pillar of cloud by day that protected them from the desert heat and the pillar of fire by night that kept them warm. But Moses knew the ways of God. And Jesus wants us to know not just God's actions, but his ways. Romans 4, reading from verse 17. In the personal writing, he says, as it is written, I, that I, is God. I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God. We are picking up on this story where the apostle Paul is writing concerning Abraham, our spiritual father. Abraham is the spiritual father of all who believe God by faith. Abraham is the spiritual progenitor father of every person who becomes justified by faith in God. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. And he is saying here in verse 17 that God spake to Abraham and said, I've made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, Abraham we're talking about, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak, in faith he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old neither yet the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god true unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded what he had promised he was able also to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. So Lord, bless now your word. Uh, speak to my lips, think through my mind. Let your word be a lamp to our feet, a light to our path, and be food and medicine to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Understanding the ways of God. God spoke to Abraham in verse 17. When, as yet, Abraham had no child. God, it seemed, waited until Abraham was 100 years old. His wife, was well past menopause. And Bible says, and God spoke to him and said, I have made thee a father of many. Now I want you to watch the grammar. I want you to watch um, the tense. God, is, God said to Abraham, not I will make you. God is saying to Abraham, it is a done deal. Can God tell lies? It is not possible for God to lie. For whatever God says becomes. Even if, and I speak as a man, even if God wanted to lie, whatever God says it is, it becomes. So it will be that. And so God spoke to Abraham in a time in his life when the situation was difficult and the need was almost impossible well it was very impossible from a human standpoint in the same way i want you to join with this story i'm believing god to speak to you that god is saying to you today concerning that thing in your life that seemed impossible because maybe you get too big abraham was a hundred year old i don't know is anybody a hundred year 
maybe if it would have happened for you, it would have happened a long time ago. But now you're considering the time has been passed and the enemy has managed to deceive you into denying yourself the blessing that God still has in store. Because you have to understand, if you're going to get the blessing that God has for you, you have to seize it, lay hold of it aggressively by faith. You cannot do that if in the midst of your mind there is still unbelief. The Bible says Abraham did not stagger at the promise through unbelief. And God said to Abraham, when it was impossible, humanly speaking, that not I will make you, but I have made you. This is the God you serve, understanding the ways of God.